I'm Julius Carpos. I was born in Holland, the southern city of Maastricht, on 16 of April 1921. I had four sisters and three brothers. Later came one more. I was the oldest. Harry was a long time a close friend when we went to school together. Then was Wani or Anthony as my second name. He became a banker and died when he was 65, too young. We uh, could stand each other very well, except now and then that I had a fight with my brother, even with my sister sometimes. But uh, that uh, cooled off and uh, later we became friends again. My best sister, was my oldest sister. Her name was Mia, and uh, she was uh, always with me to do things and uh, organize things. She was good at that. And we played together. Later, uh, I made a, a, a cabinet for her when I just was married. And, uh, she appreciated that very much. She died at 82. Mother was very strict, and uh, she could scare you. At the, the last moment, she always uh, turned down, uh, and it was not that bad. I admire my father very much. He was a strong man and quiet man. He uh, knew a lot of things. For example, he did carpentry, and I was always beside him because it was fascinated to me. So I learned uh, carpentry from him, actually. He once was planning to play billiard in Belgium and uh, my mother was not so uh, uh, eager to let him go. So he stayed home, but I could see he was angry. And uh, I was kind of fighting with my brother and uh, it was too much for my father and he kicked my ass. My mother was even angrier. I was with two brothers of mine at the boarding school. And uh, we, um, two times a week, during the afternoon, just the whole school to the forest. And there was pines all over. We climbed these trees, especially pines. It was easy to go in. We are looking at the squirrels and the, the birds that were flying around there. It was a great time. In the war, my uh, brother Anthony, he, was, he worked for the underground to get the uh, stamps to the, the boys who didn't want to go to Germany working. And they caught him. At least they thought I caught him. And, uh, but I couldn't prove anything. And my mother was very upset about this. But they, they kept him in, in jail. When my brother was picked up by the uh, Gestapo, I kind of, uh, I didn't know what to, uh, to do. 
I was recommended to go to a hotel where I worked before, and uh, because I worked for the Germans, but uh, I was still uh, kind of uh, not happy there. So I uh, I stayed with my uh, by my own in the uh, old uh, chapel near near our house. My sister came on the idea to get them off, get them free then. My mother had a cousin, he had a store in, in the other end of the city and uh, he was pro-German. So we let him work to get my brother out of the jail. After a couple of weeks, he succeeded. So uh, my brother was back home. Mia was in a, a choir, a choir, uh, operette group. There was once they had a, a, a celebration of the uh, singing group, and uh, I was invited too. I didn't know Mia, but uh, my friend, he was in that group. Also, so he brought me to the, the festivities. I came in the in the hall where they were drinking and eating and drinking, and I spilled some uh, drink on Mia's shirt. She said, uh, "I better go home and, and, and change." I said to her, I'm sorry about this. Uh, uh, can I go with you? Then, uh, oh, sure, she said. So uh, I went with her. But uh, actually, we went through the park and uh, we got kind of uh, love each other. She was sitting on uh, the railing of uh, a little stream. And uh, before we went, to her house and uh, she could change her clothes. I just had a girlfriend uh, before in uh, Belgium, Visé, French speaking. After a year I met her, I didn't like her anymore, so uh, I quit going there. And that's when uh, me and I started seeing each other more. When I started uh, business, she was a big help in the store, but my, my mother, she didn't like too much, was like her ID, was we had to marry rich girls. That was her ID of uh, bringing up the boys. I was in the park, and uh, not so long after uh, I met her. And uh, I really liked her because she was quiet and uh, not uh, the girls what I met before. I was in that park, that we just sat down on the grass, and uh, then we were hugging each other. And then I suddenly said to her, what about marry me? Would you like that? And she thought for a minute and she said, sure I would. I, I, I wouldn't like anybody else. So uh, that was an agreement.
there was one thing. Holland was overpopulated. And uh, it was very hard in Holland to become an independent businessman. And that's what I always wanted to be, independent. After a while, uh, changing jobs and uh, we got in business. We got a store. I imported waffles from Belgium and I had a, a grocery route. But I couldn't do all that at the same time. So I hired people. Mia was in the store. I hired one to do the, the grocery route. And I took care of importing the waffles from uh, Belgium. We were thinking that we worked way too much for the money what we made from it. Everybody said, you, you're doing well, and you know, but uh, I didn't believe in that. I wanted to have some more. But in Holland, I did a job what I would like to do my whole life. That was uh, framing and repairing statues. There was, uh, uh, there was a store that was uh, uh, relatives of Mia. When we visited them, I said, I wish I could do that. And uh, the, the owner said, well, you can, because we are planning to quit. And uh, so we made an agreement that I was going to work there for a year. And after a year, the store was a lot more better known in that city than, uh, than before. Then they said they would like to quit as they would, could sell the store, the business. We asked them how much they would have. They said it was 10,000 guilders, 10,000 guilders what is now actually nothing. I didn't have that money. So I went to my parents and they, they could do that, but uh, they didn't feel like paying uh, $10,000 for business that uh, they, didn't know, they didn't know even what it was. They were not interested to uh, come over and see, but uh, Anyways, that way it was. They, uh, they didn't have the money to say, and I had to, to find another job. But that was the job what I would like to have. Uh, 1958. We, that's when we left Holland and uh, we were on the, and my brother, Jerry, he decided to come with us. So we were all together in Rotterdam where the boat was, the boat was called the Waterman and it was uh, not a big fancy boat. It was just made good enough to bring immigrants to, uh, to Canada. On the boat, we were, we had four children by that time. And uh, we got a, a room in front of the ship. And by the rough weather, the waves hit the front very hard and uh, we could hear that uh, like uh, somebody was banging on the outside of the ship with uh, something big, you know. We got uh, uh, help from the Canadian and Dutch 
Immigration Service. They provided us with a house where we could stay in for the time being. Then, uh, after a while, we could rent a house on Logan Avenue in uh, Toronto. From there, I got a job at uh, Hans Bakery. And Mia was working for the Simpson Sears. I think she was a big help with uh, financial, because she brought in a lot of money, because she had a good job, and she could speak very well English. I wanted to be independent. In Holland, there was no chance you could do a good thing unless you have to earn little and work hard. Here, I found out the difference. You work hard, you earn a lot more. So uh, that's what I always was after, to uh, get uh, a business going for myself. Later, I tried to get on my own. And uh, I was a partner, an other Dutchman. We went together to get the jobs done. We went from door to door in a well-off area and uh, tried to get jobs. We started painting. And uh, we got several jobs, paint jobs, for uh, doing inside or outside. But he was clumsy. He was so clumsy that I got tired of him after a year. He spilled his paint and he tripped over a, a leather. And I don't understand if uh, the guy could be like that. Not long after uh, we were in Canada, I came up with the idea of uh, painting. I had always uh, be for art. And uh, so one day I took a, a canvas and uh, put some art on it. I think it was Lake Louise. Uh, what I painted, and I showed it to uh, um, a minister what came to visit. And uh, he said he liked it very much, especially the tree, what I put on it, was in the front of the, the painting. And later uh, I made more paintings from a uh, part of Paris and later uh, that's nature. I love to paint nature. Bush, woods, rivers. Well, I think I love nature. These days, I see what is on television, you know? All the shows they give you and uh, all that uh, holy glue. <laughs> but if I see nature, like uh, in uh, a show where there is what is taken in nature, I love that the most because I love trees. I love trees very much. Here on the property we live, we have 19 adult trees. Maple, ash, pine, spruce, and so on. Once I say something about trees, I remember up north, 
when we had the cottage. It was about 300 kilometers from here uh, to get there. But we had it for 18 years. The largest tamaracks around the cottage. We cut a lot of dead trees there, hundreds of them. And I used it all up to, to burn in the stove in the cottage. The most trees, what I like, is a pine. I have seen pictures of pines, but I loved mostly evergreens. I love better than uh, the other ones. I didn't do much reading when I was young. I didn't do much reading. But uh, I was always busy with doing things uh, to create something. It was only that I uh, was, when, when I was married a long time, I kind of quit working and things, you know. They, uh, I pick up reading. I like to read about the Indians. When they, uh, when they, the Indians and the Eskimos, I read several books and I love to read Farley Mowat because he uh, wrote a lot about the uh, Indians and I loved them all. They were all great. Well, there was the story of for the, the deer, the people of the deer. I have there a book uh, that says all the, the, all the books what he wrote, Farley Mowat, about uh, Indians. I think the way they lived. Yeah, they lived from nature. Uh, there was no other way. And that is what I admire of these people. Well, I was raised as a Roman Catholic. My mother was very religious, very religious. And uh, my father kind of uh, went along with her. But he wasn't so much interested as uh, my mother was. When we came to Canada, I was still Roman Catholic. And, uh, but when I came in a parish, uh, the clergyman, the pastor, kind of looked down on us, on immigrants. And I didn't like that very much. So, uh, after that, a few times, talked with my wife about it, and uh, we decided uh, that the religion was not, not for us. We just could go on without religion. I believe in uh, human love, that uh, people love each other, and that they not intolerant for many things the way people are these days. They don't have to change religion. It, uh, it is fading out anyways. It's beginning to change. And I think it will change for the better. They think themselves for a better world. And that is what uh, has to come to. It will take maybe uh, a long, long time, but it will come, I believe. And especially by the young people what are restless and uh, looking for better lives. I found out that uh, raising the kids to, while the way I was raised, 
I wouldn't uh, appreciate that. So, uh, but still we did when, or I did, when uh, we were married in the beginning and even after uh, the, the youngest was seven years old, uh, we still kept, um, or I still kept a uh, strict rule with the kids. But uh, that wasn't necessary. I, I learned that uh, love was better than uh, rot. And uh, so uh, that's why I changed after everybody else out of the house. Uh, all the kids were on their own. I didn't talk much about uh, things, but uh, I, I was uh, making sure that everything went right. And uh, when the kids came to visit us, then I was kind of a, a different father. Uh, it was more like a, a, a better, <laughs> a better person for them. The person what I admired the most uh, in my life was Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Why I did was his kindness, his smartness, his wit, he was great. He made me a good Canadian. He put Canada on the pedestal in the world. He was a, an example for peace and that's why Canada became kind of a peace Land. I was uh, mostly a uh, liberal because of Trudeau, but in, sometimes I uh, was in doubt. I wasn't sure about the liberals doing a good job, but that was after Trudeau. And I voted once uh, NDP, when uh, Leighton was the leader of the NDP. But uh, after that, I became liberal again. And, uh, I don't know. But, uh, I was kind of dull most of the time if they uh, did well enough. I was sorry that. Uh, Nobody could follow like uh, Pierre Trudeau did. They were all uh, and, uh, just politicians. I uh, don't regret anything what I did. It was all for a good life, and that's where I succeeded. We had some hard times in between, but uh, I hardly uh, think about these things. I just think about the way it is at the, at the moment. I can recommend peace, that they keep peace among them, that they live in peace with others. It's very important to have peace in the world. If they're not, they keep on fighting and what good is it? I think if they get, keep peace with each other, then the world gets a better place to live. <laughs> take a long, long time that that will happen. 
but I have a good idea that it will happen. The meaning of life, I think, is just make the best of it. That everybody lives a good life without any hassle. And it is, if they love each other, then I think you make a good cause of life.